Okay, we're going to check out numbers 31 through 35 on the MCA packet. And number 31 asks us to find uh, the distance between two points. Um, so you can do one of two things. You can graph these two points on a coordinate plane and then use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the distance between the two points. Or you can use the distance formula, which they give you on the MCA formula sheet. So it's x2 minus x1 plus, and all that squared, y2 minus y1, and all that is squared. Okay. Uh, so you have to choose, it's kind of like finding a slope. Uh, choose one of your points to be your first point, one to be your second point. Does not matter which one you choose. It works out either way. So I'm going to say, okay, here's my first point, x has come first, and here's my second point. All right, so we have to take x2 minus x1, and that's going to be 4 minus negative 1 squared, and all this will be under a square root. All right, um, and then the 4 minus negative 1 minus a negative turns into plus. All right, now we've got to take our y's and subtract those, y2 minus y1, 5 minus negative seven. Same deal. Those are going to turn into plus uh, minus negative. So here's what we got. Uh, five squared plus twelve squared. Or five times five is twenty-five. And then twelve times twelve is one forty-four. So we're going to add those together under a square root. We're going to go up. Uh, so we actually have one sixty-nine under a square root which comes out to 13, because 13 times 13 is 169. Uh, so we're looking at C for number 31. <coughs> All right. Could you use the Pythagorean theorem? Uh, find the same answer. All right. Uh, what is the relationship between the lines? All right. They are both in y equals mx plus b form, which is very helpful, because in that form, this is our slope m. So this has a slope of negative 1 third. This has a slope of 3 over 1. Uh, they are opposite reciprocals, meaning they are perpendicular lines. And there we go. That's how we do that one pretty quick. <coughs> All right, number 33. A square is drawn in the coordinate plane. And it'll probably, if you were looking at it, uh, would probably be drawn diagonally, um, something like that. But squares, remember, all at 90 degree angle corners. So um, there's only two options here. Either there are two lines that are parallel or perpendicular to each other. Uh, so we're looking for two lines that have that relationship. One of our lines here, uh, they're asking, so what, what is, uh, so this is one of our lines and they wanna know what could be one of the other sides of that square. So um, the first thing we'd want to do is solve for y so we can figure out what the slope is in this. So the first thing is I'd subtract 5x on both sides. We're going to get this into uh, slope-intercept form. All right, so we're left with negative 4y equals, uh, and I'm going to put negative 5x plus 20. You could have put 20 minus 5x, but I like to put the slope first. Um, and then we divide everything by negative 4. y equals, so we got a negative over a negative, and I'm going to leave this as 5 fourths x, negative over a negative is positive, and then 20 divided by negative 4, that'd be plus negative 5 or minus 5. Not as important because we're really just kind of focused on what that slope is. All right, so um, let's look for an equation that has a relationship with that. It's either got to be parallel or uh, perpendicular to that um, slope. Uh, it's not b, because that has a slope of negative 4. It cannot be d either, because this is the exact same equation as that one. And if it's the exact same side, then it's not that one. Uh, so we're looking at c actually does work out. Negative 4 over 5 is an opposite reciprocal to 5 over 4. All right? So c is the correct answer there. You can check with a. Um, if you solve for y, you shouldn't get um, a parallel or per perpendicular slope to the one that's given there. All right, so that's what we're looking for on that one. And getting down here, this one takes a little bit more time, but the last one's real quick. All right, so that little graph we just passed goes with number 34. 
It says, what is the equation of a line that is parallel to the line shown that passes through the point 6, negative 5? Two options. Um, you could graph 6, negative 5, which would be over 6, down 5. That point would be right here. You could try to figure out, okay, um, how, let's find a parallel line to that one, but then you need to make sure you find your y-intercept uh, that way. So either way, you need to find the slope and uh, come up with a y-intercept. Um, but it's not going to fit on your graph if you do it that way. So let's figure out the slope of this line using two points and rise over run. So that point's on there. This is a good point to use, so rise over run. I like to run first, so I'll go over one, two, three, four. One over four and up one, two, three. So we have a slope of three-fourths, and we're going to use point-slope form to come up with an equation uh, for this line that's parallel to that one and goes through the point six negative five. All right, so point slope form says y minus y1 equals n times x minus x1, and this is on your formula sheet um, and will be given to you. So uh, this is x1 and this is y1, our specific point that we want to go through. Our slope was three fourths as we just found. All right, now we just plug some stuff in. So y minus negative five, that's this point right here, or that part of the point, and then x minus my x value, which is six, and here we go. So this turns into plus, we have y plus five equals, and we're gonna distribute here, okay? So we've got uh, three-fourths x, and then we can do a couple different things here. Um, you could take put this over 1 and do 3 times 6 and get 18 and then 4 times 1 and go 18 over um, 4 and reduce that. I'm going to do a little bit of skipping ahead here. 4 and 6, I can take 2 out of both of those, so I'll divide them both by 2. So really I've got uh, 3 times 3 and 2 times 1, so it's minus 9 halves. Alright, um, so 9 halves, we can get the decimal if we want to, is 4.5. So, minus 4.5, and what's going to happen here is we're going to solve uh, for y. So we're going to subtract 5, subtract 5, and here's what we do. We get y equals 3 fourths x minus 9.5. Okay, do we see any of that match? that point. A is no, that's a negative slope. B um, also has a negative slope and it's flipped from what we've got, so it's not that one. Looks like we've got to convert this to standard form, so it's going to be C or D, uh, which means um, I shouldn't have converted that to a decimal, uh, but that's okay. We can still work with that. It was just easier to add that way. So I'm going to get rid of this, and we're going to take our equation here. And we're going to turn it into standard form. Sorry about the length on this one. we got a couple of tough questions here at the end. Um, so the first thing we want to do is get x and y on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 3 fourths x on both sides. And we've got, we're left with negative 9.5 on this side. And negative 3 fourths x plus y on this side. All right. So what we're going to want to do um, is multiply everything by 4 to get rid of the 4 here. So I'll take this times 4, and this times 4, and we're going to take this times 4. So this will be negative 3x plus 4y equals, uh, that's going to be 4 times 9 is 36 half of 4, so we got 38. So more than likely, it's going to be D, but there is one small little thing um, about, oh, that's negative, sorry. Uh, there is one small little thing here that we got to do. Um, we would have to multiply everything by negative 1, because you can see for D that all the signs are opposite. 3x is positive, uh, but for ours, it's negative. So if I multiplied everything by negative 1, it would change all the signs. So this would cancel with this, that would make this negative, and the negative one would also cancel with this, making that positive, so we'd be left with D. All right. Alrighty, and 
lastly, this one's real quick, I promise. And we're going to use it for the next uh, couple as well. Um, so we have a uh, scatter plot, and the first thing it asks us about this is what is the correlation between weight and age? And it looks like this is a positive correlation as it rises from left to right. Or as one increases, the other also increases. All right, so uh, we'll finish up with the last video, and that'll be it for the MCA Packet Solutions.